So thank you very much for joining us. And um, just a few kind of housekeeping rules or just some reminders that uh, today's session will be recorded. So I hope that everyone is okay with it. Um, and the second thing is we'll keep the Q&A till after all the speakers have um, spoken, yeah? So that we can have a nice discussion at the end of the three speakers sharing session. Um, the other thing is to just remind everyone to keep your mics uh, muted and probably your videos as well. And if you have any questions later, you can type them in the chat or you can raise, use the raise hand function to uh, let us know that you want to ask a question. So um, without further ado, we have a really exciting lineup of, um, of speakers um, and we have Dr. Rosila Wati, we have Dr. Nufikri, and we also have Dr. Nufarazila, who will be sharing with us their research. So before we go into um, listening to this very exciting research, let me uh, introduce you and to, to invite Professor Dr. Saiful Anwar bin Karsani, who is actually the Dean of the Frontiers of the, Nat the Natural um, world Research Cluster, and who is also our acting coordinator. There he is, um, very casual as usual. <laughs> so, all yours, Prof. Saiful. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I thank uh, the speakers for agreeing to be part of today's uh, session and discussion. And I also thank everyone for taking a bit of time off to listen to some very uh, interesting presentations from our respective research centres. Uh, now, the idea came about when we were actually preparing for the IRG application and we found that one of the biggest issues is um, identifying potential partners for research, especially in interdisciplinary research. Uh, and the biggest reason is that people don't know what others do. And again, if you put that in the case of the centres, we have 70 plus centres and very few people know what they are and what individual centres do. So, uh, we hope that this platform will allow people to understand better what each research centre do and perhaps foster potential future collaborations uh, which will give rise to uh, winning new grants so on and so forth. So again, thank you everyone and I hope we get something good out of this. So have a nice one and thank you Steph. Bye. <laughs> Right. Thank you so much. Yes. Wow. We have like 70 plus centers at UM. Can you imagine that? So definitely it's nice to hear from our different centers because um, I think most of us, you know, we only know the centers that might be related to our areas and we really don't know that UM has so many centers doing really great work. So um, um, before I, I go further, just to welcome everyone who's just joined us. Thank you for joining us once again. And of course, thank you to all the speakers um, who have agreed to share their research with us today. So the uh, first speaker that we have is, I was I was looking at what GS means, you know, um, Prof. Rosila, I didn't even know what it was until now. So I think it's geospatialist, and I'm sorry if I got that wrong. So there you go. And Dr. Rosila Wati Zaino is an associate professor at the Center of Sustainable Urban Planning and Real Estate at the Faculty of Built Environment, University of Malaya. But she is also our very own director of the Center for Civil Civilizational uh, Dialogue. Yeah. And so you see lots of email coming from them. They are always. Um, organizing events um, related to to the area. So um, she joined UM in 2004 and she has published, of course, lots of articles, chapters and books and books related to sustainable urban development and tourism development. And you can see that, uh, that her recent publications are definitely related to this. Um, one of them is on healthcare facilities and population distribution in Malacca using spatial statistics. Yeah, And also looking at at spatial assessment of the impact of flood to Malacca's uh, economy. So I think it's best that we hear from her. So if Dr. Rosila, if you have any slides to share, you may start sharing them now. And over to you. Morning, Dr. Hello, good morning, morning uh, Prof. Steph. Okay, okay, Alhamdulillah, Sindar Rahmani Rahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum uh, warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And good morning, everyone. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Prof. Uh, Stephanie just now uh, asked about uh, GS, what does it stand for? It's uh, actually, it's, it stands for Geospatialist, uh, meaning that, uh, you know, uh, do this, uh, we do this uh, spatial analysis 
uh, using GIS, Geographic Information System. Mm. Very interesting. If anyone would like to, you know, venture more on the GIS, the spatial st uh, statistics, spatial analysis, yeah, let me know. Contact me. <laughs> okay, I have some slides to share with you. Okay, let me see whether I can... Uh, uh, I can I can share mm. yeah can everyone see this yes doctor we can great okay, thank you. Uh, yeah thank you Paul. all right um okay let me okay um uh, yeah I'm representing uh, the center for civilizational dialogue and uh, okay, we, we actually we do lots of uh, programs, uh, lots of programs. As you can see on our in, on the first screen here, uh, we have this uh, Nara data in uh, uh, early this year. We we have bro, how many minutes do I have? Um, about twenty minutes. If you can do that, I will kind of come in and. Uh, shout at you if you don't finish in 20 minutes. Uh, okay, 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 all right. Thank all you. right. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so we, we organize lots of uh, dialogues uh, because it, uh, on our name is Dialogue. And at the same time, we also have forums. Uh, we have um, uh, conference uh, and then we have uh, workshops, you know, uh, skill workshops um, by our UNESCO club and so on. And then we have this uh, uh, monthly uh, do we, you know, monthly uh, dialogues uh, because um, yeah we, we want to share with, with many people and recently the the most recent one uh, was uh, with uh, Prof Dato Halina uh, if you have heard her name uh, she's she's uh, she was the director for Chitra UKM and then we we have. Uh, uh, our own uh, associate professor, Dr. Wendy, uh, and then um, uh, Kiri. Uh, in our previous uh, dialogue session, it was very interesting. It's called Merdeka, uh, Merdeka Dalam Pandemic. And, you know, the latest, um, not the latest, uh, no, the four Cs uh, in uh, skills, the 21st century skills. Yeah, sh you should, you know, uh, Google it. Uh, very interesting. So anyone who have missed it, okay, let us know. Then we can sort of like uh, uh, inform you where to to get it. Actually, our website uh, have lots of information, and then we put up our lots of our uh, previous uh, programs uh, uh, in 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 our website and, and also Facebook. Yeah, like our Facebook. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Next. Um, uh, th this is the outline of uh, the presentation for today. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, CCD team members. Okay, so we are under um, uh, Prof. Dr. Nur Saada. Okay, our DBC for Research and Innovation. Then we are also under uh, Prof. Stephanie Cluster uh, Dean, Advancement and Happiness uh, Research uh, Cluster, and then we are empowered by. Uh, Deputy Director Dr. Awani Ghazali, and then uh, we also have our Professor Kehormat, uh, Datuk Professor Dr. Azizan Baharudin. Okay, if uh, she will be coming back soon. <laughs> okay, and then uh, we have Dr. Duria. Okay, Dr. Duria uh, uh, become um, um, became our research fellow, and then uh, our own Mr. Chang Li Wei, uh, have, who have assisted us for uh, quite a number of years. Okay, and then uh, we have uh, Puan uh, Nozaliza, Zaina Abidin, our uh, admin assistant. And then we have uh, Muhammad Abdul Ghani, uh, Abdul Ghani, sorry, Awaludin, uh, who is the our project officer. And then we are also supported by uh, Puan S. Rosita Saari as our uh, clerk and also Muhammad Abdul Yami uh, as our operation uh, assistant. Okay. Right. Uh, what's our mission? Okay, mission, vision, and mission. Okay, we want to be the center of reference for the development and dissemination of civilizational discourse, 
and engagement with the Southeast Asian region and beyond. Uh, for your information, uh, we um, just been selected to be the the center for the whole uh, the region of Southeast Asia under KAISIT. So you know um, uh, we have yet to receive uh, official letter, but we are so proud that you know we become the the center. So we are going to uplift um, our centers to make it known. Okay. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, when uh, Prof Saifo just now mentioned about uh, not knowing um, many of the centers, okay, amazingly, uh, you know, amazingly, we are known by the people outside UM. Can you imagine? Uh, you know, they use uh, they use our center to be to 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 uh, how to say to. Um, uh, to back up their their programs and so on, so it's amazing. Okay, we don't we didn't know until someone reported to us. Hey, do you know that uh, your center has been mentioned in the presentation? Really, I was you know, uh, I was excited about it. Okay, so our mission is to promote global peace and sustainability sustainability of human civilization uh, through dialogue. Okay, so. Yeah, that's uh, our mission and uh, vision, right? So the roadmap. So uh, many did not know that we we are celebrating our uh, what Jubilee Pera, uh, our twenty fifth anniversary this year. Okay, so inshallah, end of the um, before end of this year, we are going to you know launch something you know to to. Um, to let everybody know that you know we have reached twenty five years, you know, uh, all right? Okay, maybe it's uh, uh, this this center is older than some of you probably. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, so this is our objective quality. So um, everybody know that uh, you know um, we have to achieve certain things, you know, our KPIs and so on. So. You know, we we on, we should only achieve six activities, but we reach more than that. Okay, and then uh, research. We are a bit uh, slow in the research because um, you know uh, we have to share uh, what we got uh, with the faculty. So uh, we can't run away from our being our being representing our faculty, our old faculty. So so this this center has has to share uh, with whatever we, we we receive for our grants. And then uh, we have also monographs, we have uh, journal articles, I know journals, especially we have uh, two journals later I will share with you. And then uh, we also publish chapters in books. OK, and then um, uh, this is what we have done uh, for the year uh, for this year. So we, we had forums. We have uh, this uh, program, Diskusi Buku Dunia, you know, uh, and we have Prof. Sharir uh, last time. Uh, and then uh, we also have International Day of Youth, you know, celebrate, you know, uh, organized by UNESCO Club. And then we have virtual gaps, UNESCO Club also. And then we have workshops, you know, uh, uh, Banking Animasi Pemasaran, you know. Uh, it's very interesting. We learn new skills, you know, okay. And then we have dialogue series, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, and then, um, you know, so far we have about quite a number, okay, more than more than six, okay. And then we have, uh, we're going to have, we're going to have a, a seminar, a conference uh, before end of this year, inshallah, okay. And then I have to look to, uh, right, left and right because my the stream is is on my left and on my right. <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, research uh, at CCD. Okay, so we we uh, from um, the beginning, um, early in uh, early two thousand, we already um, you know uh, during the inception of uh, this uh, this uh, center. Okay, so we we have quite a number of research uh, we, that we secured. Okay, so these are the previous one. Okay, and then uh, this is the current one. Um, the current one they normally followed uh, whoever in the center. Okay, so uh, some are dialogues. Actually, uh, you, you have to understand what is, is dialogue all about. We're going to organize uh, a course uh, uh, introduction to dialogue. So please, please, yeah. 
uh, follow our our uh, you know uh, our Facebook, our website, so that you know you you are in the know what we are going to offer to you. Okay, and then um, okay, this this is the current one. So uh, I'm involved uh, with uh, transforming the knowledge uh, to the local uh, you know farmers. You know, very difficult nowadays. I I can't even see them. You know, and then uh, I, I communicated with um, the association, but you know, um, uh, request to have meetings. It's so, it's so how to say, it's so challenging. You know, to meet them, they are they are struggling to earn money, and we here are trying to you know pull them. But but what we share with them, the academ being the academia, we we are trying to give them skills, okay, free skills. You know, if you. If we, if they don't grab it, then then it's a it's a it's, it's, it's a, I would say it's a waste. Uh, I mean it's a lose. Uh, yeah, they are losing something, you know. Because we have to increase our knowledge, we have to increase our skills, you know, through through our lives, you know. You you don't sit there and you know hope for the skill to come. No, you have to go and you know hunt for it, you know. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Apa apa uh, penaja pesanan penaja. <laughs> okay. This this is what we we have uh, uh, publication in CCD at CCD. Okay. We have two journals. Anyone, anyone. We are open to everyone. The, please relate your research to civilization and also you know remember civilization is not about you know it's about all old time. No. Today, if you see what is what is the, the what is civilization now? Is it ethic, ethics? Yeah, ethics determines civilization. If you don't have ethics, you don't have civilization. You don't have civilized civilized people. You don't have civilized nation. If you don't have ethics, okay. So that yeah, that one is very important. Okay. So civilization is, I I think. Uh, because I, I come from uh, urban planning and also technology uh, background, okay. Uh, there was one time when I first became the director for CCD, people asked me, how is it related to Center for Civilizational Dialogue with your field? You know, uh, then you know what I answered? I said, uh, a city, a city, a city uh, cannot be formed uh, without civilization. Okay, agree with me? Okay, do you agree with me? Because, you know, if there's no civilization, there's no city. So that's why you have to, you, you have to have civilization and it evolves, evolves throughout the, the years. Okay, so, you know, you, you need to link. So I, I um, first I had difficulties, but Alhamdulillah, Allah show me the path. Okay, so anyone, anyone who would like to publish their papers, we still accept papers now. Okay, we have one in English and one in BM, and then one is uh, peradaban is in Bahasa. Anyone who would like to submit papers, please do it quickly because you know you have to remember if if you want to publish it this year, uh, we have to go through the cycles. You know, reviewers, and then we have to wait for the review to come back to us and so on. So, uh, you know, we try to, you know, complete everything by uh, November. So if you have a paper that you want to submit, okay, in Bahasa or also in English, please, please do so, okay? So we welcome papers, all right? So we have monographs. Anyone would like to, to you know, submit a monograph, yeah, we'll be happy to, to publish it for you, okay? So this, this time is going to be, going to, it's going to be an E, uh, e publication, but you you have the stem or uh, UN stem and also CCD stem. Okay, so be proud of that. And then we have books. Okay, we have books by uh, uh, Prof. Dato uh, Azizan Baharudin. We have books by uh, Dato Osman Baka and so on. But famous people. Okay, and then we have bulletin. Now, uh, last time we used to print bulletins, but now uh, it's on uh, E. So please find our bulletin in our website, okay? And then, okay, we have uh, the calendar. Uh, this is the calendar uh, from this month, 
towards the end of the year. So we are going to have. So please, 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 please follow our Facebook and also our website. We're going to have a webinar with Kaisit. Kaisit is King Abdul Aziz uh, Center for Inter Interface Dialogue. Uh, it's an international organization. So yeah, please, you know, uh, uh, it's free. We welcome you, OK? And then we're going to have uh, a, a workshop on uh, increase your citation index. OK, so yeah, anyone, anyone would like your, 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 you, yourself, your paper, your publication to be highly cited. OK, please attend this workshop. It's, uh, it's going to be a paid workshop, so you need to pay some money okay, to join the workshop. And then uh, Another thing is that we're going to have uh, that one is in September. Uh, I forgot to tell you about the August part. OK, August, uh, the coming one, we're going to have a writing workshop. OK, it's going to be this. I think this uh, that's going to be tomorrow. OK, if you have time to register, it's a paid uh, workshop. Please, please, if you want to learn about virtual and uh, academic writing, yeah, please join. OK, for those who, who uh, would like to join. OK, and then uh, in October, we're going to have uh, a joint webinar with uh, University of Sukuba. OK, so it's a very good. It's going to be a, a very interesting discussion dialogue between uh, Professor um, Takeshi Kimura and also Dato, uh, our, our beloved Dato Azizan uh, Baharudin. OK, so it's going to be a future of civilization. OK, with the current situation, so please don't miss it. It's going to be a free one, OK? All right, and then um, then in November, we, we have another program, but we have to decide it first. Uh, uh, but we're going to have our bank uh, pemantapan, you know, for writing and so on. And then December, we're going to have our international conference in, on interfaith dialogue. So uh, that will be our, you know, uh, uh, what do we call that? The, the climax of the year. <laughs> OK, so. Right. Uh, OK, then uh, our source of funding. OK, we are sustaining ourselves with Belanja Mengurus. Uh, I don't know, OKA, they, they, they call it. OK, and then we have research grants so that, you know, we have uh, research assistants that can help us uh, organize programs and also in research. And then we also uh, receive contribution uh, uh, in kind and also in monetary. Like for example, Institute Kajian Dasa, who's, who, be, who sponsor our speakers and so on. And then sometimes we receive uh, money from uh, SCOM, Suruhan Jaya Kebangsaan UNESCO Malaysia, for our organized programs and so on. And then uh, we're going to have virtual run. Okay, so I'm not so sure when it's going to be. So please, 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 you know, uh, you know, look up for the news. Okay. And then we also uh, receive from a uh, fees from programs. OK, so the one that you paid is for us to pay our speakers and so on. All right. OK, it's not for us. OK, it's not for us. OK, and then uh, these are our major challenges. OK, we we have difficulties securing money, you know, because people see uh, our center uh, uh, in, you know, give free dialogues, uh, forums, uh, give free uh, workshops. No. Uh, we, we can't be, you know, if you see that we charge certain money, it's, it's because we need to, to, you know, to get some money to pay. Sometimes, uh, the, you know, the speakers are willing to, you know, give just like that, you know. Uh, we pay them in kind, we give them books, journals and so on. So uh, that's why we, we, we can have paid uh, programs and so unpaid programs. OK, right. Um, OK, so this is our commitments. OK, so if you uh, wish to collaborate with us, okay, I think uh, in November we're going to collaborate with uh, INSTAC. OK, uh, Dato, uh, uh, Professor Osman Baka already contacted me. You know, we're going to have a collaboration. So no financial implications. Oh, that's great. OK, so you will see, you, you will be able to see our names uh, being, uh, you know, uh, everywhere. <laughs> OK, I think uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you so Thank you much, so Doctor. And we will, I'm sure there are questions for you later. Uh, firstly, congratulations yeah, on your 25 years. Um, 
Yes, and I think you all have done some amazing work and we'd probably like to know more later when we uh, when we have uh, the Q&A session, yeah? Doctor, thank you so much for joining us and please don't go away. <laughs> we will come back to you after this, yeah? So we still, actually, we're, we're ahead of time. So hopefully later we have a lot more time for Q&A, yeah? So I would like now to, of course, to, to thank Dr. Rosila and we will come back to her in a bit. But I would it gives me great pleasure to introduce our next speaker um, who is Dr. Nofikri Noor Jaharuddin and he is the director of the National Centre for Particle Physics. When I looked at his, um, his bio, I thought, wow, these are all these words that I've seen in the papers and here is the man who is going to tell you all about it. He is an experimental particle physicist and a member of the CMS experiment. Yeah, one of the experiments at CERN's Large Hadron Collider. And he is also the... Um, you know, he, he, of course, as I said, he's also the director of NCPP. Uh, he received his DPhil from the University of Oxford in 2018, and he's worked on the ATLAS experiment in searching for evidence of BSM particles with Higgs boson pair final states, and in addition to studies on the reconstruction and performance of large radius jets with high momentum and hadronically decaying Higgs boson identifications. Lots of big words, and I know he will tell us all about it. So we're moving from dialogue to physics now. So over to you, Dr. Nofikri. Thank you very much, Prof. Stephanie. Can, uh, can you confirm that you can hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, let me share my slide. Uh, right. Right. Give me a second. I no worries. Screen. Okay, can you confirm that you can yeah, see the yes, slides? Yes, I can see that. Very nice. Yes, so I'm also highlighting. Okay, thank you Great. very much again, uh, Prof. Uh, Stephanie, and um, also to the um, Research Cluster Office uh, for inviting me, uh, especially Prof. Uh, Saiful. Um, so uh, on behalf of NCPP, um, or National Centre for Particle Physics, I will be introducing, uh, talking about what, what, we, what, what this centre is actually supposed to be and what do we do. So my name is Noor Fikri. Uh, you can call me Fikri, that's, that's fine. Uh, here's my email if you want to ask more questions afterwards or whatsoever for a, a casual chat, I'm all for it, okay? Um, okay, so let's get uh, straight to the point. Um, sorry, I forgot to switch on my camera. Okay, so can you still see the slides or have I? Yes, yes, no, we can see you okay. and the slides. Yeah, okay. Um, oh, sorry, um, so who are we? So uh, we're the National Center for Particle Physics. This is our logo. Uh, this was actually drawn on by hand by our founder, which was Prof. Wan Ahmad Tajuddin. He had retired uh, last year. So I, I continue his uh, sort of legacy and his work. Um, so in, 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 in just a, sh a short introduction, I would consider uh, my, our, our center as an umbrella organization. And usually what I would like to, to use the word is sanctuary. We provide sanctuary for anyone in Malaysia for to do particle physics research in, uh, you know, in this country. I mean, uh, the thing is, before uh, the center had uh, was, was, was set up 10 years ago, um, there was there was not much particle physics research. If, is almost non-existent. Okay, so um, this so the, the idea was back then in in ten uh, in 2012 2013 is for us to have a center which we can sort of collate all of the research of particle physics research in Malaysia. Uh, back back then also it was only in UM, but now we have sort of developed to, to UKM and UTM uh, already. Okay, so uh, I, my my preference is sanctuary. It sounds nice. It sounds like you know something uh, people come people with common interests common passion to work together okay so just sort of a bit of history um so in 2005 uh, uh, physicists from university of malaya from the department uh join what we call the zeus collaboration some of these terms will be obvious to you later uh, just putting in here now uh, so by joining this zeus collaboration uh, we established the experimental particle physics. This is before I started my undergraduate in UM 2008, so it was even just before my time. Then uh, in early 2010, like 2010, 2011, we joined the Bell and Comet collaborations, and 2013, which 
is basically the year that uh, NCPP was born. Um, ASM and UM sort of established National Center for Particle Ph Physics as like a joint group establishment. Uh, and the reason why we established the, the center primarily because we want to commit to the CMS collaboration, which is one of the experiment at the LHC. Um, so this is just to show you sort of, you know, when we were rummaging through, when I was, you know, when I started being a director, I said, oh, let's look at all the documentations that we have. And I sort of want to see basically um, our um, um, CJ Brana, right? So this is the closest I could find, essentially uh, ASM uh, sent a letter saying that, you know, that they are pleased with the positive outcome of the discussion following the presentation of the proposed National Center of Particle Physics by the then ASM president, uh, Tan Sri uh, Mat Tajuddin to Tan Sri Grau, and also by the um, higher management, 22nd of, 22nd of March, 2013. So this is where we uh, established ourselves uh, no, uh, seven or eight years ago, okay? So um, who do we consist of? Um, we, we call ourselves as fellows. Um, in, in NCPP, so there's not much um, strict. This is we want to be as 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 you know as relaxed as possible. So we we currently right now we can uh, consist of five academics. Academics here being from universities or research institutes. You know, scientists, senior scientists from let's say from nuclear nation. Uh, we have. Uh, overall, postgraduate students, about three master's students and three PhD students, and one uh, research officer. We used to have two or three, but you know, contract ran out, so we're left with one permanent research uh, officer. So it's a small group um, compared to you know the center before, which was like 25 years. We're still like eight years since uh, since since our inception. And you know we have a quite a good following. We used to have a lot more students, of course, um, due to funding uh, opportunities lacking out there. Um, you know, three MSCs and three PhDs is not quite too bad. Okay. Um, so right now, members of our center comes from primary uh, come from uh, UM, UTM, UKM, and Nuclear Malaysia. Um, so the funny thing is the academics are you know equally from each of these uh, university. We used to be predominantly from in Malaya, but right now uh, in UM I'm sort of the only uh, quote unquote senior academic uh, from uh, from University of Malaya. So we have all of the uh, all of the academics from UM, UKM, and so UTM and UKM are you know quite young uh, academics. While from the Nuclear Malaysia is sort of you know pretty from, from the older generation who's pretty much going to um, retire soon. Okay, so um, we, 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 do, 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 we, we do want people to join in uh, as many as possible. Okay, um, so what do we do? So what I want to say, uh, sort of the, 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 the scope of research that uh, people in NCPP do in one slide is we want to probe the standard model of particle physics and then break it. So what do we mean by the standard model? Now, if you if you were to sit down with me and chat, I will convince you that um, these particles here, so on the left here are a list of particles, and these are the fundamental particles that we know of until today. Okay, we don't we, we, we have not discovered or have not you know, experimentally proven any other fundamental particles, and you can co co compose the universe into all of these particles here. So on the left here, the, the purple and the green are matter particles, and predominantly, well, when you say predominantly, we are, we are, we consist of up, down quarks. Doesn't matter if you, if you don't, you don't need to know what they are exactly. Uh, electrons, right? The protons and neutrons, if you remember from your school days, that's what we're made of, and they're made up of up and down quarks, and then the electron, okay? So all these three is pretty much us. Then you have all these other particles, which doesn't live that long, and we've studied them thoroughly and deeply, okay? That's what particle physics has been doing for the last 50, 60 years, and we continue to do so until now. Uh, so the standard model of particle physics are able to describe all this, particles. And not only that, they're able to describe their, the, the way they talk to each other through these four particles. Okay, um, So the, the equations on the right, you know, aptly, usually people like to make this joke that we can write down 
the, the, the standard model on on a on a on a, on a glass on a mug, sorry, or on a T-shirt, and then sell them uh, to get funding. Right. So this is this is the joke. So uh, the the list of particles on the left and the way they interact with each other on the right, mathematically, how to describe them is pretty much a standard model. Okay. So we probe the standard model but we intend to break it or check whether we can break it. So what do we mean by breaking it and why do we want to do that? Breaking it is to make predictions and see experimentally whether the predictions correspond to data. And the reason why we want to do that is because even though this is probably one of the triumphs of 20th century, the standard model, but there are a lot of deficiencies from what we observe in nature. Okay. Uh, the recent particle that we discovered was the, like seven or eight years ago was the Higgs boson. But the existence, the experimentally proven uh, existence of, of Higgs boson poses many questions. And by doing measurements and trying to break it, will tell us whether we have more fundamental particles or we have more, you know, more refined theory of, of nature. Okay? So uh, that's what it means uh, by, you know, probing the standard model and then try to break it. Okay? So, how do we do this? Like any other scientist, any rational scientist, we perform experiments, right? What determines in science, whether a model is quote unquote correct or the right one, we perform experiments, okay? And um, so what, what particle physicists do is that they set up a lot of these laboratories around the world, okay? Uh, due to the nature of the work of uh, modern experimental particle physics, not one university usually will be able to do an experiment on its own. So you would have a uh, big um, laboratory such as CERN. I, I think this is probably the most famous one you would know. So it sits at the border of Switzerland and France at, this, at the city of Geneva. Um, then you have, you know, um, laboratories such as uh, DAISY at Germany. So sort of like the mini CERN, uh, which is set in Germany. The reason why I put this because this is this is the first uh, laboratory that we sort of have collaboration with. Then we have uh, collaborations with, uh, with laboratories from uh, from Japan, which is KEK and it's you know, a sister uh, so with uh, sub uh, organization JPARC. Okay? So all of our experiments right now are based in uh, CERN, DAISY, or KEK, and JPARC. Right? So we quite have an international collaboration. Here. So, so we, we don't uh, collaborate with the laboratory per se. What we do is we collaborate with big experimental groups. On the left is CMS, which is based in CERN, which is part of the uh, LHC experiment. Then we have the Zeus experiment. This has been shut down for a long time already, but we're still a member of it um, due to its historical nature. It's the first experiment that we joined. It's it's the it's basic it's basically the the soul of the experimental particle physics group in Malaysia because this gives life to uh, National Center for Particle Physics. So it's, it's, a, it's a nostalgic experiment for us. Then we have Bell 2 and Comet, which are both experiment in, in Japan. Uh, I'll talk about them in detail, uh, you know, for, 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 for your uh, knowledge here. Now, uh, personally, uh, I find particle physics to be you know, exciting uh, on its own uh, sociology because it is truly a humanities global endeavor. Not saying other fields are not, but particle physics is big science. Uh, like it's 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 big science not because we want to. It's big science because we have to. So just to sort of point out the scale of big science I'm talking about is like for the CMS experiment, which is which is I am a, a member of. We have about three thousand physicists. A third of that is about uh, students, whether PhD or master student. Then you have one thousand uh, quote unquote engineers. 281 technicians, and these uh, you know, these people come from 229 institutes from 51 countries and regions. Right, so I work with people all the way from um, the west coast of the US, and also people from all the way to New Zealand, and also from from Japan, uh, sorry, from from uh, Korea, and then from Europe. Right, so differing time zones. Sometimes I have to talk to people who are like 15 hours before. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, to time zone uh, 15 hours before and you know trying to juggle all of this is so is no less a feat on its own right so some people are quite excited just to be in the collaboration because you're able to talk to people from all over the world 
Okay, so it's truly a humanities global endeavor. Um, just a word on some quote unquote local collaboration. Um, so we work with the Data Intensive Computing Center. Uh, there's handsome chap here. There'll be a younger picture of him. Is Dr. Liu Chi Sun. Um, he's uh, the, 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 the director of High Performance Computing Center, which we call as Data Intensive DICC. Uh, in DICC. Uh, oh, someone um, mute, unmuted, I suppose. Um, so um, the, the, the DICC was formed uh, sort of in conjunction with NCPP back in 2013, 2014 uh, to sort of prepare for CMS Tier 2 as part of the LHC Worldwide Grid and also to sort of serve the computing needs for particle physics research. But now uh, they're not just doing that, but they're also providing HPC services for the whole of UM. So if you not haven't heard about this, then you can go to the website. And if you're interested in having some um, firepower to your computational needs, then you can uh, meet up with uh, Dr. Dr. Liu. Uh, this is just my uh, help for advising his group. I think probably most of you have heard about this, right? So the experiments, I'm going to talk to you about it in detail, just to sort of uh, get you know what it is. I'm looking at my time now. Right, OK. Um, so this is the Zeus experiment. Um, this is Hamburg, and this is the Daisy campus. This was the, uh, the, the detector. The detector is quite huge, probably the size of our uh, IPP building. Um, probably a bit smaller, I guess, uh, for, for this one. Um, so the, 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 the ring which collides the particles is quite big, but it's not as big as the LHC. And um, this was where uh, sort of we started our work on experimental particle physics, at least for, uh, for by Malaysian institutes. And um, the primary sort of the primary reason for this uh, for this experiment is to investigate the structure of the proton. Okay, and um, we worked on it, uh, one or two people back then, uh, uh, previous decade, two decades ago. Um, it stopped data taking in 2007, but still the results, the data sets from, from this experiment is still being analyzed uh, from you know, what we call as legacy data sets and still keep producing valuable physics input to the particle physics community. Okay, uh, not, 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 I don't want to dwell on this uh, too long. Now, the flagship experiment, the one that we're all very proud of, I'm very biased because I'm a CMS uh, person, of course, is the CMS experiment. So this is uh, a view of Geneva from, from, from the sky, as this is Lake Geneva. Um, the LHC collides and accelerates and collide particles in this yellow um, circle here, 27 kilometers long. And here is where the CMS detector resides. This is where we take pictures of the collision and perform uh, analysis to extract physics or find new physics, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so examples of the physics that we've done in our center and keep and continue doing is that we were involved in uh, studying the top quark, which is the heaviest particle, fundamental particle so far. Um, this is a flagship uh, analysis that was done uh, like in 2014. And we also worked on measuring the newly discovered Higgs boson from its decays and production processes. So uh, these are these are groundbreaking uh, measurements. We were, I'm not saying that we were the ones who did it alone, but we were part of the group that uh, analysis group within CMS collaboration. Okay. And um, so those were measurements. I would call as measurements. We measure the standard model and trying to understand it. We also try to look for new physics um, in our data sets, right? So uh, one of our students uh, worked on trying to find micro black holes. You know, uh, funnily enough, people feared uh, that you know we would create black holes at the LAC. And what one of our students discovered was we could not find any. Um, you know, signs of, of black holes like this plot here. So if you if you expect to see uh, new particles, then the black dots, black dot markers, which are data, should follow, let's say, the cyan uh, uh, curve here, right? So you don't see that, therefore, no black, no black holes. We have a student trying to find if there are heavier Higgs boson out there. Uh, they came into two muon particles. Uh, no evidence so far. And um, and we still keep on searching. There's still more data to 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 collect and also to analyze. And um, you know, for, uh, and the CMS collaboration will keep on get uh, collecting data for the next um, 15 years, right? Um, so so that's that's CMS. So still 15 years to go. 
And then uh, just a quick word on Super KKB and Bell 2. So this is an experiment in Japan. So this is Mount Tsukuba, so it's in Tsukuba. And this is a relatively a smaller experiment, but still quite big. And this is the Bell 2 experiment. So this is sort of uh, the, the, the sequel to KKB, which is, well, you don't have to understand what it means by luminous, luminosity, but you can say this is, uh, uh, it's, it's like going from Proton Saga to uh, to Ferrari, right? So 40 times more luminosity than the previous experiment. And the reason why we want in, uh, to do this in this experiment, why we like to be in this experiment is because there are indications from what we call as B physics, uh, um, hints of new physics, but they're not conclusive yet because the data set is quite small. So having 40 times more data set can elucidate this uh, hints, and we would like to be one of those people to, to participate in this experiment to see whether new physics exists or not. So Bell 2, with its huge data set, will be able to confirm this in about five or eight years' time. Yes, it takes a long time for us to do groundbreaking physics. Um, so just quick involvement, which I think I want to highlight here and I would like to be proud of, is that uh, one of our PhD students were involved directly in assembly of the CDC and commissioning, which is the heart of the detector here. Um, so he was, you know, spent a year or two in, in Tsukuba uh, in, uh, commissioning, pulling the strings on the detector and also performing the tests, uh -huh, whether you know, testing that it works or not. Okay? Uh, so just a quick look, he should be proud if he's here, that first collisions from Bell experiment started last year, and you could say this, uh, this, this Malaysian hands resulted in, um, in this, in this results, right? So the Bell 2 will record collision data up until 2028, 2029, and along the way we can start analyzing the data with the full data set, we can extract more physics, okay? I'll, I'll rush a little bit now. Now, uh, another experiment that I worked in, uh, Yes, again, some bias here is charge lepton flavor violation experiment called Comet. So in essence, you don't expect to see a particle like muon, just take my word for it, to decay into an electron. It transforms into another particle. Okay, Up until some observation 20 years ago, this process is possible, but very rare, 10 to the power of negative 50. So it's like you know, 0, 0.0, then you put 0 50 times. That's the probability it's happening. It can happen. It's predicted to happen. It's just very rare. But if you have science, if you have new physics, if you have physics that we have not discovered, like uh, if some of you are familiar, supersymmetry, then this probability increases like orders of magnitude, right? 10 to the power negative 15, 10 to the power negative 11. Still very rare in you know in our in in uh, according to our intuition. But this is experimentally possible to check. And the reason why we, are, we like this, uh, this experiment is because such processes and such experiment uh, gives competitive complementary um, um, uh, physics probe uh, to the LAC. Okay. So um, this experiment um, is, is a simple one where we try to capture a particle with uh, with the material and see whether this process is happening. It's clean. If, if, it, if, if it does happen, we can see it very clearly, just like this plot. And uh, what we aim to do, this experiment hasn't started yet, it's still being, on, it's still being constructed, uh, is to uh, beat the previous uh, sensitivity uh, from the previous experiment, which is syndrome 2, 10 to the power negative 13. Comets go or wants to go down four orders of magnitude, four or five orders of magnitude. Okay, it's a big stage. Two stages. Uh, right now, we're in phase one, hoping to take data in 2020-2030, with um, phase two um, going to happen in 2027. Then this is still quite ideal. This could go up until 2029 or 2030. Depends on the timeline. Okay, so plenty of opportunities for you to join throughout your whole career if you're interested. So NCPP's involvement in Comet is we are involved in commissioning of the detector and a bit of software, tracking methods and software. That's what I do. And we have uh, people who wants to apply FPGA to the experiment. If not now, then later. And we, we were sort of um, um, inspired to do this based on the Newton Unko Oma Fund that was awarded a few years ago with Imperial College. Now they have the expertise, so we are changing, you know, transferring skills between them. Okay. I'll be very quick now, sorry. 
Um, so um, just to highlight some of the research that we do, even though we're mainly an experimental group, but we have people who are working on theoretical high energy physical cosmology, uh, study string theory and black hole phenomenology. We have also collider phenomenology, which, is, which are people trying to um, understand uh, dark matter and how future collider can uh, reach um, the, 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 uh, the, the, the discovery scale. We also have students who have worked on detector hardware and uh, instrumentation uh, and, and electronics R&D. Uh, we have one PhD student who works on radiation hardness. You know, she, her expertise is in materials, but uh, she's looking into whether graphene is a possible uh, material for um, you know, our detectors. Then computation, uh, which is a, 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 an important, which is a key aspect of, of particle physics is because we have this huge data set and to analyze them, we require high performance uh, computing. At the same time, in order for us to extract as many physics possible, we look into machine learning because the, the, the data sets is uh, multidimensional. When I say multidimensional, it can be like 10, 20 dimensions. And you know, using simple techniques doesn't work, so machine learning might, might, might sort of might help. Okay. Um, so, um, I don't know why my thing's not working. So I just want to get a quick glance through our alumni. I want to honor them here, right? So these are these are actually my friends. Uh, so they, they did their master's here in UM. Now they've just finished their PhD or finished like Siu Yen here has finished their PhD uh, in Padova. He was headhunted by Padova because of his good work in NCPP. Now he might be joining UKM, another, you know, another, 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 another person coming back to NCPP. Then we have Afik who's now a postdoc in DAISY. Did his PhD in DAISY, uh, masters in UM. Again, both of them hit hunted to do their PhD there because of their good work in NCPP. We have Atika, who used uh, uh, did his her masters on using Zeus datasets, and also uh, Nuha Nuzulaha Jomari. Uh, she did her exper uh, analysis on Zeus also masters. She's now doing PhD on CMS at DAISY, um, you know, just like Afik. Um, we had Fami Maulida and uh, Javad, uh, who are international students. Um, Fami from Indonesia, Javad from, from Iran. Um, it's unfortunate to say that Javad passed away just after he submitted his MSE thesis. So this was him uh, talking to Barry Barish, a Nobel laureate, where he was uh, when he um, organized an um, international um, um, conference in in UM. I'll talk about this in a bit. So uh, just to point out on uh, on. Uh, the person on the left of, of Fami is Prof. Wanama Tajuddin, our first director and also the founder. The reason why we're all in this mess. Oops. Uh, my, my screen is stuck, so. Um, that's probably, is it because of the internet connection, Dr. Fikri? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Topic, topic. it's okay. You can hear me, right? Yeah, I can hear you, but yeah, you're stuck at the postgrad, but um, are you Probably you can just uh, wrap up and we can come back during the Q&A if you okay, left okay. out anything so, important. Yeah, yeah, okay, so, so, this is great. So, um, this is, um, sorry, I don't know why my uh, as long as you can hear me, it's fine. Yes. Uh, so, just to I have one more slide. So, essentially, if, if you're interested in research op uh, in opportunities with NCPP, if you want to join experimental collaborations, you want to do R&D with, uh, with us on experimental techniques, uh, detectors, and computation, or even education, because we perform outreach, trying to understand how we can have students be interested in experiment in physics or STEM, um, please let us uh, know. Um, that's it for me. Sorry about this. I don't know why. Um, no worries. This happens with us when we're online, you know, with internet. But thank you so much for sharing with us. Probably to those of us not from science or from physics, a lot of the things went over our heads. Uh, but definitely during the Q&A, we could ask you more questions, Dr. Fikri. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Please stay I, on. I probably we'll, have to reconnect uh, again. Yeah, so, no worries. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll look for you. Thank <laughs> you. you. Thank you very much. Sorry about this. Uh, see, no worries. See you at the uh, Q and A in a bit. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So as we move along uh, to the next speaker.
I think Dr. Fikri is a bit frozen. Ah, there it goes. Okay, right. And our final speaker for today, we're still in the realm of science. And we've got uh, Associate Professor Dr. Farazila Yusuf, who heads the Center for Advanced Manufacturing and Material Processing at UM. And she's also, of course, the head of department at the uh, Mechanical Engineering uh, Department at the Faculty of Engineering. Now, she graduated from the Nagaoka University of Technology in 2011, and her research interests include joining and welding technology and pow uh, powder metallurgy, advanced materials processing, additive manufacturing, and product design. She's published more than 52 research papers, supervised uh, numerous PhD and master's students, of course, and she has also won lots of awards nationally and internationally. Um, she's also an active participant in the technical committee for threads and screws under CIRIM. So without further ado, it gives me great pleasure to invite Dr. Farazila to please share your slides and to share with us your research. Doctor, over to you. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, a bit of an um, echo, but yeah. Are you on two devices, Dr. Farazila? Um, a bit soft. Yeah, because I tried to use a good device, but then it has been an echo on that. I tried to oh. speak loudly. All right. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you, Prof. Stephanie, uh, for the brief introductions uh, about myself. And then uh, thank you also to uh, Prof. Saifu for inviting us uh, at MMP to give a brief uh, introduction about the center. Let me uh, share you the slide. Um, are the slides visible? Yes, Doctor. Right. Okay. So, um, good morning, everyone. Okay. So this is the. Uh, I will. I will talk a bit on the AMP, how it started, and how currently it's doing. Okay, uh, as introduced by the Prof. Stephanie, my name is Farazila Yusuf. I'm from the Center of Advanced Manufacturing and Materials Processing, or known as AMMP. Okay. And my research area that currently I'm doing is about the uh, advanced material joining, um, additive manufacturing, uh, CAPCAM. Okay, for the uh, content of the presentation, um, I divided into three parts uh, for this um, introductions. Okay, and also uh, about the some of the activities and also achievement and some collaborations uh, opportunities. Okay, we look into the first content. Okay, so I start with the vision and missions. Okay, so the EMP actually. Uh, the founder of the AMP is our uh, VC, uh, to Professor I R, uh, Dr. Hamdi. So the visions that he looked during the uh, establishments of the AMP is to become the leader uh, center of the advanced manufacturing and material processing in Malaysia and a renowned expert group in Southeast Asia. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Um, um, we have a, a lot of collaborations uh, between a Malaysian, uh, between a Malaysian uh, university uh, as well as in the Southeast Asia. And the missions of the center is to conduct world class research and also to enlarge the consultation. So we would like to be a frontier in the field of the advanced uh, manufacturing and also the material processing. The objective of the uh, establishment of the center, well, we can see um, usually uh, it will relate into the uh, area that we venture in. So one of the uh, objective is to extend expertise of the member in various area of discipline. Okay, not only, uh, but in particular, a uh, conventional manufacturing, but then it may evolve later. Uh, to the advanced manufacturing and now currently we are going towards for the IR 4.0. And we are also 
look into uh, securing funds by obtaining grants and providing consultation services. Okay, not only a uh, local grant, but we are aiming also for the international grant. And also, we would like to serve um, the uh, country, the society, with the knowledge that we have. And also, we would like to increase the number of publication in international recognized journals. Okay. We look into the highly cited uh, publication in order to increase um, the citation as well as to increase uh, our names internationally. And also, we would like to commercialize products from the research conducted because the ultimate aim is not to keep the research uh, within the uh, within the uh, content of the research only, but then we want to extend it into some uh, product that can be used uh, by the industry or by the community. I will share it later on what uh, we managed to do for some of our products. All right. <clears throat> so moving on. OK, let me let me um, uh, let me uh, give you a brief history of the uh, AMP. OK. It was started in 2003. During that time, it was only, only a small group. Uh, during that time, I was I was the um, master students uh, in the uh, group, and this group uh, basically started with our two uh, prominent professors, which is Professor Hamidullah and Professor Philip. And during that time, uh, Prof Hamdi was uh, just come back from his PhD, and he started the small group uh, where that. Time, during that time, they managed to secure some of the grant, uh, local grant, which is last time is called it IRPA. And uh, they, um, they managed also to get uh, some funding from the international, from JICA, which is uh, AUN Signet. And when, um, when the group become uh, larger, they managed to uh, do more, uh, to get more research fund and also consultation. This is some of the uh, company that uh, during that time uh, that uh, collaborate uh, in order to uh, solve their industrial problem. OK, in 2009, the uh, group has been lift up into the center in December 29, 2009. And then in 2010, um, it has been approved as a center uh, by the Senate. And a year after that, 2010, um, uh, 2011, um, a spin of company uh, was uh, was uh, registered under the uh, center, which is Zetron Sundiamber Height. Okay, um, we have a luxurious time. I think most of the lecturer, most of the staff in UM uh, still remember we got uh, uh, HIR, the Special uh, High Impact uh, Research Grant in uh, 2011. During that time, the center managed to secure two projects, which is among uh, 7 million. And during this time, uh, we managed to uh, secure um, other grant as well. And in 2017, uh, Prof. Hamdi another one center, which is the CRI 4.0 center. Uh, and this is the to actually uh, to look into the revolution, revolution um, industrial 4.0 um, in Malaysia. Okay. And currently, 2020, uh, we have uh, secure some amount of grant as well in order to move further uh, to achieve our uh, uh, our missions uh, for the AMP. All right, some facts and figures about the cent uh, about the AMP. So uh, currently, uh, start from the, uh, the, the the introductions of the group in 2003 until now, we have managed to publish more than 670 publication, varies from the uh, ISI journal, Scopus, and also conference proceeding. And we managed to um, file uh, 32 patents. Uh, some has been granted, pet, uh, granted and some still in the uh, uh, pending in filing. And uh, we managed to um, graduate the student, the postgraduate, uh, the master, either master coursework, uh, master by research or PhD, uh, around 200 students. And as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we managed to have uh, one spin of company, which is that Transcendent Berhad. 
Okay, looking back into the name of the AMMP, okay, it stated like uh, advanced manufacturing and material processing. However, uh, when we look deeper, there are a lot of area that can be explored. Okay, this is some of the area that uh, perhaps could um, give some enlightenment. Uh, what is the actually what we are doing? Okay, so um, about the uh, research interest. So we have divided the cluster uh, into five cluster in the center. The first one is about the smart manufacturing and big data analytics because we know that uh, we are we cannot stay in one place. So uh, because of currently uh, the country and also uh, globally we are moving from the um, uh, from the um, normal or conventional manufacturing into industrial uh, into a more digital uh, world so uh, we put it uh, as part of our uh, subsections in the group to look into that to achieve to be par with the uh, outside player so this will cover in terms of the uh, industrial 4.0 area um, iot and also uh, looking into the uh, what is the future manufacturing uh, in, the Malaysia, in Malaysia? Secondly, it's about the advanced manufacturing and precision joining. It's more related to myself. I could be biased here. So this advanced manufacturing can be varied from the, uh, from the um, uh, normal machining into the currently when we have uh, 4.0, we have additive manufacturing um, as well as the uh, uh, precision uh, in terms of the uh, welding and joining. And we have uh, another subsection, which is the functional coating technology, where in the functional coating technology, we look into more precise um, applications. Okay. So because of we have an expertise in this uh, area, we have the equipment that we can look for, for further. So it can be useful in the future. And now currently there are a lot of the um, inventions uh, for the uh, antiviral um, anti um, anti uh, uh, virus coating that can be provided uh, to uh, to help into uh, secure the, the part from the uh, infections and uh, we also have the energy and control processes okay so this is more looking into the um, uh, heat transfer analysis, uh, more on control engineering, and etc. And finally, we have advanced uh, materials processing. So, uh, this uh, look into the more details on uh, materials that are related to the uh, processes for the manufacturing. Okay, so this is the key members of the AMMP. Um, we can see the uh, we have the uh, main members as well as the associate members in the group. Uh, so, uh, the as I mentioned earlier, the clusters of inside the center itself be divided into five, and you can see uh, under that we have a multidisciplinary um, academics that involved in the activities, the research activities, and this center uh, actually uh, helped by the two administrator. Uh, one for the technical and another one for the uh, to to administer the um, documentation uh, for the uh, center. Okay, moving on, we have the uh, activities and achievement uh, for the center. All right. So some of the image showing that what we do with the uh, community. OK, so this is the uh, project that uh, we done with the uh, College Vocational Sungai Bulu, whereby we, they come to us and get some advice, some uh, we, we did uh, transfer knowledge, uh, what we have uh, to them in order to uh, elevate their knowledge uh, to uh, ensures that they can cope with the uh, industrial applications. So uh, to list out the activities that we have, we have the research and engagement activities, uh, various activities that we have done throughout our uh, existence uh, in UM. Some of that 
we have like industrial visit where we visit the industry uh, to get a new uh, insight what the industry currently doing and then to uh, promote our activities to them and we also have a visiting professors okay um, not only uh, in the uh, national level but also in the international level whereby uh, these activities uh, usually we exchange the ideas we exchange the knowledge and also we collaborate um, uh, in order to uh, ensure that uh, we are uh, cope with the uh, developments of the research and we also involved in a technical seminar okay previously before the COVID before the pandemic uh, what we did is we do the uh, uh, the conferences okay uh, we managed to uh, uh, we managed to have uh, several conferences uh, during that time and uh, it was uh, very beneficial um, uh, beneficial uh, activities to the uh, members, not only members, uh, but also uh, students uh, in the center. And we also managed to have a workshop, several workshop with the, uh, like I mentioned uh, earlier, with the uh, college, uh, uh, college uh, vocational uh, Sungai Bulo, and we do have another uh, various workshops that involve uh, not only the um, uh, technical schools, but also with uh, the industry. And um, we have the exchange student um, uh, from a various country. We have from German, we have from Indonesia, we have from uh, UK, as well as for the uh, local uh, universities, such as from SEGI and etc. And um, we also have the postgraduate monthly meeting in order to ensure that our postgraduate are uh, uh, progress, uh, uh, progressing well in their research so that they will not uh, lag behind. Okay. And uh, when the uh, when, when when during the pandemic, what we did is we still uh, maintaining our activities. Such, uh, however, uh, it's not so much activity. What uh, what we can do is actually we do the uh, online webinar. Okay. We have uh, several webinar that have been done. Um, uh, last year as well as uh, this year. This is some of the snapshots of the webinar that we are uh, we are already uh, done it. Okay, so this is the webinar is the uh, free webinar. Uh, we encourage actually uh, those who are interested uh, to know uh, about the uh, center, to know about what what is going on in the center, uh, to uh, attend the webinar. Um, the the target for the webinar actually is like uh, uh, we will do. Uh, uh, by monthly uh, later I will update in the uh, website so that uh, those who are interested could um, join our uh, webinar. So this is some other webinar about the uh, virtual reality AR about the blockchain technology uh, and I also have the uh, webinar uh, workshop actually between um, the uh, outside uh, institution uh, from LGMU as well as uh, UM and other uh, university. OK, uh, some of the um, media uh, that MMP. So apart from doing a research, what we do is we are also try to um, make the product that we have done to be commercialized. So this is the uh, example that the commercialized product that uh, have been developed by the researcher at MP, uh, and then uh, and then after that, Zetron Cinema Hut could uh, develop further about the uh, product and sell the product. So this is the uh, article mentioning about the uh, solar uh, dryer, one of the uh, product. Okay, so this uh, product has actually uh, been able to dry uh, the uh, the items such as a fish and also uh, uh, what you call it, chilies in order to, uh, uh, to to ensure that it is clean uh, and then can be dry even though at, during the uh, monsoon seasons. We have also about the another uh, invention which is uh, such as uh, done by Dr. Sayuti here. Uh, the uh, to to design the um, the use of the uh, saw um, to to make a new uh, product okay for the sustainability 
and also uh, we we develop the uh, lace machines uh, that the, the the first commercial lace machine in Malaysia. We are proudly uh, able to develop this and actually used by the uh, vocational school. Okay, so moving on into the uh, product that, uh, as I mentioned, one of the objective of the center is actually uh, to commercialize the product because we don't want uh, all uh, we don't want the research just um, in the lab. We wanted to be um, used by the industry or to be used by the community. This is uh, some of the product that have been able uh, to be uh, ready to be commercialized. Okay. And some of that is actually uh, already been done, been used uh, uh, by, by, by the user. Okay, we have the first one is uh, automatic thermocyclic, thermocyclic dipping machines. So uh, this, uh, this machine actually has been bought by the um, uh, UM dentistry. And then after that, um, other dentistry faculty uh, in Malaysia uh, interested to buy and the, uh, the, the machines is actually uh, able to be sell uh, for I think four uh, into uh, several institutions such as USM, UITM, and USIM. So uh, with this machine, uh, it not only helps the uh, user to uh, to reduce the time uh, for the uh, doing a research. So uh, this is one of the machines that uh, being able to be uh, sell. Uh, and be able to be uh, used in the user. And we have uh, the CNC list machine like uh, for this uh, second one. Okay, so this also um, developed by the uh, center with the help of the Zectron. So this machine can be able uh, to cut the machine. This is usually in Malay is lari. Uh, usually lari, this, uh, uh, the, the usage of the lari is to do the cylindrical part, to machine the cylindrical part, okay? So it can be uh, useful to do the uh, patterning on the cylindrical uh, component. And we do have also another machine that used in our laboratory, which is a powder based physical vapor deposition, uh, which is PPVD, if you can see on my right side here. So P PPVD is actually the collaboration between uh, our center with the um, uh, Okay, you. Uh, in one of the Japanese uh, uh, university, I don't remember the name. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, I will come back later if I remember the name. And also, one of the Japanese company is Alvac, in order to actually uh, develop the scientific uh, instrument. Okay, this is a scientific instrument where usually for the uh, uh, physical vapor deposition, the uh, uh, the Target usually is a solid target. Okay, for those who are in this field might know, usually the target, the coating target is uh, usually made from the solid target. But this machine has a, uh, has a special uh, application whereby it's not only the uh, uh, using the solid target, but it can use the powder based target. The advantage of powder based targets actually we can mix the type of materials in order to coat the materials. Because if we wanted to have like a solid target, it's a bit uh, difficult to produce in solid target for certain material. So the uh, usage is more versatile compared to the uh, conventional, uh, not convention, to, to, to compare with, with the uh, machine in the market, which is the physical vapor deposition. We do have the uh, machine, uh, the, the conventional uh, vapor deposition. Uh, later I will show you in the laboratory, but this one is um, versatile machines that can be used to coat uh, various materials. And uh, next is about the solar dryer. Okay, solar dryer is actually uh, the one that I showed you previously uh, that can be used to dry the uh, items such as uh, fish, etc. to help the uh, to help the fishermen or to help the villagers uh, to dry uh, their product. Okay, usually during the monsoon season, they are not able to uh, dry uh, efficiently and then uh, it may uh, produce the um, uh, fungus in the uh, in the product. So with the solar dryer, because we have uh, 
we can control the humidity. We can uh, we put we, we we actually enclose it this uh, this uh, dryer so that there is no uh, flies can uh, go inside. Okay, and finally is a laser soldering machines. Okay, so this is uh, usually for the uh, joining of the um, electrical uh, components. They use the uh, either the uh, manual soldering or the, you can use the uh, other processes. But then um, uh, using the um, uh, like a furnace uh, processing. But then uh, what we can uh, what we invent here is actually we use the high technology using a laser in order to uh, improve the process as well as to uh, ensure that uh, it can be precisely controlled. All right, finally, uh, the, the last one is about the uh, project that uh, ongoing in the uh, center. We have uh, several projects that are ongoing. Uh, I pick up uh, most of the uh, big projects that are ongoing um, in the center. So we have um, because of um, uh, now not only a conventional machining or conventional uh, manufacturing can uh, uh, is, is important, but then we need to look into the future. What we uh, usually discuss in the center is to know what is the um, what is the frontier uh, research, what is the uh, what is the uh, advance method that be used in the um, other places. So we come up with the uh, several ideas and we come up also with the um, uh, proposal in order to ensure that the uh, research that we have we done is actually uh, is in, in, in uh, par with the uh, other institutions and or other uh, country and also uh, with the uh, industry. Okay, so this is uh, some of the latest project. If I can uh, go through one by one, the first one is about the um, additive manufacturing, which is we call it the uh, hybrid, uh, not only additive, but then uh, combining two processes. That's why we call it the hybrid manufacturing, uh, which is using the um, uh, direct uh, depositions uh, of the materials uh, with the uh, forming processes. That's why they call it the hybrid for the uh, productions of the lightweight uh, metal alloys. So this is more on the uh, uh, process uh, of the uh, productions, whereby we want to see where, uh, the possibility to use uh, two processes in order to make sure that the product uh, that we produce uh, have the high quality. And we also have the second uh, project, which is the digitalizations uh, and also the characterization of the material. Uh, for the uh, Kendi as the cultural heritage of the Southeast Asia. Okay, so we can see that here in this project is actually uh, looking more on the digitalized uh, uh, heritage uh, product. We have a special um, scanner in a, uh, that can be uh, analyzed the uh, materials as well as the, uh, the material compositions um, of the uh, product. So uh, when we know the material composition, we can actually replicate or reverse it and uh, and produce this uh, and to preserve the heritage culture. And uh, we also uh, have the project uh, on the coating technology. Uh, this uh, related to the uh, bovine bone. OK, um, this usually uh, the the application is suitable for the implant, uh, which is the titanium alloy uh, coated with the um, uh, bovine bone as the uh, raw materials. And we do have also uh, a project with other faculty, uh, such as the uh, automated uh, methadone machine dispenser for the methadone maintenance treatment program. So this is uh, the development of the machine uh, in order to help the um, uh, the uh, pharmacy to dispense the um, methadone uh, solutions. Okay, so this is the collaborations between the uh, the AMMP with the uh, Faculty of Medicines. And um, apart from that, we have 
um, other project, which is the aerospace process capability enhancements towards towards uh, I I 4.0 adoption. This is more on the uh, smart manufacturing to see the uh, readiness and capabilities of the aerospace industry when they wanted to adopt into the IR 4.0. This is very important for the future of the uh, of the manufacturing industry in Malaysia, whether uh, our players in Malaysia are ready uh, to go further for IR 4.0 or still lagging behind uh, for the uh, readiness in the 4.0. Uh, next, in my uh, right side, we have the uh, RICE project, IWELL. So this project is actually uh, awarded um, uh, for, uh, is awarded uh, from uh, Horizon 2020 grant we, uh, to investigate the, um, the precision joining uh, for the uh, welding. It's not only on welding process, but also into the whole ecosystem uh, from the materials database and also what is the uh, future uh, directions. And we do also uh, have a project uh, that related to COVID-19, uh, such as an indoor, uh, indoor uh, airflow analysis to prevent the airborne uh, COVID-19 infections. Okay, this uh, project awarded by the JICA through the uh, COVID-19 grant, okay, headed by one of our members. Okay, we do have uh, um, there are two projects related actually to the uh, COVID-19. One of these, another one will be the manufacturing of the portable ventilator, uh, the project that related to COVID-19. So uh, during the earlier pandemic last time, uh, our uh, members uh, are uh, very active, help the uh, frontliner in order to reduce the uh, uh, in order to help into uh, the improvement of the uh, uh, ventilator system. And uh, some of that, uh, which is uh, some of the other is, uh, other projects, such as the uh, more on the engineering uh, or fundamental uh, project, which is to uh, see the improvement of heat transfer in the uh, internal group surfaces uh, through the numerical and also experimental uh, investigations. Now moving on into the what we have in the center, so I could share with you some of our facilities uh, that uh, we have in the laboratory. Uh, we have uh, basically four laboratory under the uh, center. The first one is the uh, uh, surface uh, laboratory, okay, uh, supervised by uh, Datin Dr. Bushra. So in this laboratory, we have uh, advanced uh, machines uh, such as the, the one that I uh, mentioned earlier, the PPVD, the physical uh, powder physical vapor deposition. When, and also we have the PVD machine. Uh, we have the uh, micro scratch uh, testing machine is here in this uh, uh, right here, the right, uh, the most right here. And we have uh, some uh, optical microscope and also the hardness testing machines. Um, we also have the Advanced Materials Processing Lab uh, supervised by uh, Prof Ramesh and also uh, as a professor Dr. Tan Cho Yong. Uh, actually, in this lab, we have several machines such as the high temperature furnace. We have several furnaces, okay? And we have the uh, uh, hydraulic uh, pressing machines and we have also uh, the cold isotactic uh, pressing and actually we have another one, the microwave uh, microwave uh, furnace. The, that one is the industrial level microwave furnace. Okay. Um, um, another uh, laboratory that we have is the industrial machining laboratory. So we have the uh, CNC machines here and uh, at, at the back of the chair here, actually we have the gantry machines. Okay, this one is CNC milling machine. We have a gantry machine. We have uh, a few 3D printers. We have a conventional uh, milling machine uh, on uh, most right here, okay. And lastly, uh, the precision engineering lab is under my laboratory. We have the uh, laser uh, welding here. We have 3D printer. We have some of the equipment that related to the um, uh, joining welding uh, welding process, such as resistant uh, spot welding. Uh, we have ultrasonic soldering machines and etc. So if you, you are interested to know more, you can actually go to our uh, website, okay? And also you can scan here, 
Okay, this is the QR code. You can, this is a brief uh, brochure here. You can scan. Okay, and also you can email us uh, anytime, and we will. Uh, we are very happy to uh, to answer uh, any question and also to start the collaborations. Okay, Prof. Uh, that's all from me. Thank you very much, Dr. Farazila, for very detailed sharing. Um, I think we now know a lot about what, you know, uh, your centre is doing. So thank you for that. And uh, I'd like to also now bring all the three speakers together so that we can commence with the Q&A. And so as uh, the three speakers come along, I want to just, you know, kind of see some of the things that I noted was among the three centres, how important collaboration is and working with others, whether at the national level, international level, and even with other disciplines. Yeah, as, and probably we can ask um, all of you more about that. But also um, about the transfer of knowledge, uh, whether in terms of product uh, development yeah, or commercialization, but also in terms of capacity building, training of others yeah, and sharing your knowledge with others. So it's not necessarily always product development. Um, and visibility seems, uh, is well not seems, is definitely very important so that others need to know who you are and know what you're doing. Otherwise, how will they come to you uh, for solutions or for assistance, yeah? And we saw that the, the centers, definitely the centers I feel um, are becoming, well, they, they are centers of reference, yeah? And, and that's why visibility is important. But I guess also it's because of the good work that you're doing. And that, that is why research is very important. Uh, not, of course, you publish, of course, you, um, you, you have other academic outputs, but you need to make sure that people outside industry, the community, self practice that you deal with know about the work that you're doing, eh? including inter international uh, institutions as well. So, um, that, I mean, I do have some questions, but per perhaps I'd like to open it if anyone would like to address your questions to any particular speakers or to all of them. Um, please, please feel free to put up your hands and um, unmute your mic to ask. So let me see if there's anyone who would like to ask any any questions. Everyone is still processing all the information, I suppose. Um, any any questions from anyone from the the virtual floor? OK, while people are thinking of, uh, am I missing any? Uh, Yana, if you notice anyone. Ah, OK, of course, Prof Saifo has a question. Go ahead, Prof Saifo. Uh, hi, uh, Steph. Uh, this is actually specifically for uh, Dr. Nofikri, actually. Uh, I mean, uh, I've been involved in uh, looking at your center for many, many times, and I've heard you present many, many times, Dr. Nofikri. And uh, unfortunately, until today, I, I still do not 100% understand uh, the work that has been done. Uh, but just out of uh, curiosity, um, as a lay person, if I were to ask uh, what's in it for me, in other words, how would your discoveries in the particle physics affect my daily life? At least maybe you're not now, or maybe in the future. How, how would you respond to that? I mean, I, I'm really curious as to uh, what's right. actually happening. Here. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. So there's two ways um, you can think of it. One is from pure knowledge, right? Out of curiosity driven, of trying to understand um, how the world works, how the universe works. So that's my scholarly academic, pure intellectual, manara guiding answer. Um, but what ha, from, from research in experimental particle physics, um, the offshoot of the technological advancement usually, well, it's not usually historically we've seen, it has brushed off to medicine, um, you know, proton therapies, and uh, also the advancement in computing are also pushing computer scientists to have better well, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit of a stretch to say we're the reason why people are pushing, but you know now they don't, they do on their own. But these, are, uh, I'm trying to find a word for it, they're the seed of further technological advancement. I, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to commit saying that this is what's going to happen because I truly believe, don't believe that's what science is. Probably engineers do. Sorry, that's just as a pot shot, right? So, um, so you know, this we, we, we learn from history that we have done things that are not for you know utilitarian gain but um the the results from 
from our search for, for fundamental physics or trying to understand nature has resulted in things that make things better. Right? Uh, I can deliver a lecture on this, but uh, but that's just the thing. And I like to keep grounded that way and people have to understand that, right? Because well, the moment we pursue something because for utilitarian gaze, at least for particle physicists, then we just don't see you know, the point of fundamental physics at all. I mean, I, I, open, I, 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 I do believe out there, there are people who are just curious, right? And the people have asked me not what they got in return. Really, what, what do you do? And ask what's the most fundamental questions, right? So it's a balance, yes, I know. We, 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 we've talked about this before, uh, for Saipo, but I, that's my answer, essentially, to people. Okay, cool, thank you. Uh, yes, I, I just think think, interesting, I just like to say, the, the most people that I've talked to are pretty much children. They never thought what's in it for me. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. The adults usually are that, but um, they are. They are more curious. Uh, and in fact, I do believe if adults go on and saying, uh, asking what's in it for me, there's something wrong with our education along the way. Right? But I think I think this requires a long theta rate session. Yeah, yeah. Time, I'm sorry. Right? I, I, I just uh, no, 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 no. It's it's. I, I think sometimes we get we we forget to philosophize and we forget the the fundamentals of research. Um, you know, as as we kind of get swept away with all the other things we have to do. But yeah, I mean, I think the essence of science, philosophy, arts is about curiosity. So yeah, um, any any other other thank thank you for that, uh, Dr. Nufiki. Any questions from anyone else? I'm trying to look at the panel. Um, I wish I ate hands sometimes when you're doing online <laughs> um, things. But I, I also, you know, just picking up on uh, the three speakers and what you mentioned and also what you just said, uh, Dr. Fikri, I mean, how I and I I'm quite fascinated with uh, what dialogue is doing, and also uh, Dr. Barazila, you 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 look. It looks like you do work with people from business and people from the culture and arts and uh, social sciences as well, right, Dr. Barazila? How has that experience been, Dr. Barazila? I mean, you guys coming from engineering and and very technical, very product, you know, working on product development. So, how has this experience been working with people from other disciplines? Okay, thank you, Prof, for the questions. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's not easy. Okay, well, I can say that. Okay, because they have a different philosophy, especially from the business perspective. They, ha they have a different perspective with, with us, but then we try to reduce the gap between the business and also for the engineering uh, perspective. So usually what we did is we look into the similarities, the interests, okay, so that we can actually find the, um, the match what they need and what we need, and then we match them, and then then we uh, go further. Uh, for example, in the business, we are usually uh, working with uh, Dr. Azni. Okay, so he he is more on strategic uh, part of the business, while we are more on the technology part. So uh, when we uh, table up the the solutions, then we can see the actually the the point that we uh, meet together, the match point. So that's. That's the, the, the interest that we, we should have the, when we did a collaboration with other multidisciplinary area, we need to look into the interest of both sides, where we should uh, go along and then now, uh, can, when, when we, we have the interest, the same interest, then we can go further. Same goes to the culture, they have the same interest with us, they wanted to preserve the uh, culture, uh, but we have the solution to help them. That's the why we can uh, expand our not only uh, knowledge engineering as well, uh, but also in the uh, other area. Definitely. Thank you so much for that, because I think we are seeing all around the world, especially the pandemic has pushed the buttons, you know, uh, very quickly about people having to digitalize a lot of the kind of the, the softer side of things, if you like, um, you know, when people cannot travel or people want to look at um, you know, historical sites and a lot of the science has come in. So it's really nice to see that um, your your center is working with people from business and arts and culture. So congratulations on that. And probably, you know, you can share more on that at a, another platform, how to do this, because often we don't speak the same language, right? So and that that is a problem. Um, are there any questions? Am I missing anyone else? 
Okay, I'm just trying to see on the chat. Okay, so um, people are a bit shy from on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> it's okay, Dr. Rosila. If I may, if I may go to you, um, you know, I think it, with with dialogue, definitely you organize lots of events and you focus on dialogue, yeah, on capacity building. How does um research in the in the focus area, um, of the center itself, yeah, on what your focus area is. How does your research actually contribute to probably, you know, Dr. Vicky talked about knowledge and, and how, how does it build on us understanding? Because yours is actually uh, a very fundamental, as you mentioned, even in, in your talk, right? Um, it is ethics and uh, inter, you know, intercultural or, or understanding, interfaith understanding, especially in a country like ours is so important. So how does your research help with this kind of knowledge? Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Prof. Okay, how, how does, uh, in, in terms of uh, research, okay, in knowledge, uh, actually, uh, we combine both, meaning that we, when we do dialogues, we also uh, conduct research at the same time. For example, there was a program that we organized uh, last year on Rukun Negara. So we would like to see, uh, you know, we have dialogues and at the same time we are, you know, acquiring uh, information from from our participants, you know, uh, to to view uh, the importance of uh, Rukun Negara, uh, how, how does it uh, affect them, you know, Rukun Negara is so important because it is the the uh, principle of, of what we call that uh, charter you know that combine uh, all of us you know uh, to be coexistence in Malaysia because Malaysia is so unique uh, as compared to other countries in the world because we have we have multicultural multi religions and you know um, so our Rukun Negara was built to 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 bring everyone together. So if they, the young people, uh, actually uh, uphold, not just you know, uh, memorize what is Rukun Negara, but you know, uh, adopt and uh, how to say, adopt and adapt. Okay, the principles. Inshallah, our our country will be the best country in the world. You know, in addressing all issues, because we we even though we are of different backgrounds and different cultures, different religions, but we are human. Our needs are the same. Okay, uh, we view things uh, almost the same thing. We 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 see the importance of uh, you know uh, apa tu? the pyramid, Maslow theory pyramid. So you know, it's it's just that. You, you, your, 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 your perception might be at a different level, you know, uh, of that pyramid. So, uh, so we, we ask them. Uh, so we have uh, uh, that, that uh, com the research component behind it. That one is under uh, Datuk Mahmud um, uh, grant uh, because uh, Datuk Mahmud American uh, donated a certain amount. So we actually uh, put emphasis on Rukun Negara on the um, unity you know and so on and then uh, for like for example the research that i'm doing the resilient uh, of the local farmers so uh, then we we see that you know economy is one of the big component in the um, in civilization you know so uh, there's a research the research behind it and uh, the way we we disseminate program disseminate knowledge to the farmers if it is being taken uh, positively and they uh, uh, apply the knowledge that we disseminate uh, to them it will be a great result on that on their part and also in our part so you know that that's uh, how we combine both uh, right, right. you know Programs your research and your yeah thank, thanks for that i guess what i'm seeing in fact in all three you know although we are working in our own kind of pockets of uh, research areas and focus areas 
um, life isn't like that, right? So life, life is a sum of total sum of lots of things. We live in a in a in 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 a context in an ecology. So everything that is um, done by all the different groups actually will have some form of effect on our lives. We just don't see it probably, right? Uh, and that's where maybe visibility comes in, um, which is great to see. I know uh, with dialogue and also with Dr. Farazila's team, there's been a lot of media and uh, I'm sure uh, Dr. Fikri as well, you know, every time there's something that comes up, uh, amazing signs. It's a, it's a matter of how we communicate it to the public as well so that they get excited. And I'm, I'm wondering, Dr. Fikri, you know, one of the issues we've had with education and science education in Malaysia is um, the fact that, um, you know, not many people are involved, not many young people, young Malaysians are interested in science, particularly I would say physics, right? Uh, so how would you, if you, you know, were the champion and the ambassador of your area, how would you excite people about this area? I would ask them to do experiments. So this is what we do. Uh, what we do is um, so. So I I I, did, uh, I apologize for the technical issues earlier. There was a slide that we show that we do outreach, and um, so the, the thing with outreach is people are talking about giving talks and all that, which is which is great. So, but what I found, so I asked myself, what would I like to do when if I was seventeen or sixteen talking to scientists, right? So what we did was. Um, we brought experiments to them. We we asked them to do science. And people, I don't know why people say, let's not ask students undergraduate first year to do research. I think we, we, they should be doing research since they're 15, right? Even, it's, it's not about publication or whatsoever to do science. And um, it's amazing. So when we, I asked my students, undergraduate students, uh, postgraduate students to come up with outreach modules to bring, let's say if you go to school, we, we had a few events before the pandemic. We brought past home students and students from outside to come in and and um, first do analysis, like real analysis they can quote. We show them how to get the plots that I showed from real data. And secondly, to build um, do-it-yourself experiments or you know demonstrations using stuff that you can buy 15, 20 ringgit from Mr. DIY. And I, if I try to do it myself right now, I don't know, but I have... I'm still receiving emails from students that one or two years ago saying, you know, um, I'm, I remember the experiments and it's probably the best experiment is done compared to what they had even in school. I mean, I don't want to boast, but it, that kind of, you know, when they say those are the things that you know, they remember. And I think, you know, that's the, 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 the sort of exposure that we should bring. Talks, yeah, people remember they like flashy stuff, but once they get to do science, and this should extend not just in particle physics, but for any sciences. That's what I think is. I, I absolutely agree with you. I think it's nothing like literally getting your hands and yeah, feet dirty. Exactly. Uh, and that goes, I, I'm sure Dr. Varazila will also agree with that. Um, but also for, you know, social sciences, humanities and arts, it's also about doing things uh, rather than sometimes just listening to talks, especially for young people, even for us, actually, who doesn't get excited, right? Um playing with some form of data, doing some social experiment. Yeah, so um, I think we are, well, let me just very quickly check. Um, Yana, could you just give me a heads up? We don't have any questions, right? We've got some comments uh, as well, which you can read. Can I ask the, the speakers to please, you know, if you want people to be able to, once they've processed the information and maybe watch the recording, they may have questions. So maybe we can share the emails, your emails in the chat box so people can email you uh, who knows they they i think we also have guests from other universities here as well so they may be very interested to to know more about your work yeah um and also um hang on i've got a yes okay thank you thank you so as we come to national day next week yeah um i just like to ask each of you you know your few few words your thoughts about your research area and and also your own personal views about um, what wishes you have for the nation and for our for participants, listeners here today? So, Dr. Farazila, can I start with you? Sure. Uh, thank you, Prof. Uh, yeah, as uh, our previous talk uh, mentioned about Merdeka uh, dalam pandemic. Yeah, please 
differentiate between the government and uh, and the negara, ne government and the country. So okay, so when we made uh, <laughs> cakap Melayu, Prof. <laughs> it's okay, boleh je kita bilingual. Okay. But uh, because the the punya strength dia lain. Uh, Mereka dalam pandemik maknanya kita sangat bangga dengan uh, Malaysia. Okay. Bangga kemerdekaan Malaysia. So, you know, you should be proud of being a Malaysian. You know, I was not born in Malaysia but, okay, I'm a Malaysian. Okay, I am a Malaysian. So, even my son said, Mama, uh, 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 we can live better in other countries. No, no, no. I want to die. I, I want to live and you know, uh, until I, I die, uh, I want to be in Malaysia, in my country, my country. I'm so proud to be a Malaysian. This, despite whatever is happening in our political arena, that, that one is another story. So please don't, <laughs> don't, yes. uh, you know, we, we, we can't because we are not politician. We are the, we are Malaysian. No, be proud of so, being. So be proud of Malaysia. That's your yes. message to to everyone. Thank you, Dr. Yes. Parazila. Thank you, Prof. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Okay. Uh, yes. Well, um, I have a special moment actually for the National Day because I I I give deliver to my first child on thirty first August. <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, it's like. Yeah, I wish I wish that uh, our our nation will be more stronger after this because we know that we are facing a lot of challenges. Okay, so hopefully we don't fall uh, down. We need to um, uplift our head up in order to uh, to challenge the whatever the challenges that we are facing. Yeah, that's I that is my wish for the for the national day this year. <laughs> Yes, resilience, right, in the face of all that we are facing. And uh, your centre has also contributed very much to the situation with the frontliners. So congratulations on that. And Dr Fikri. Hi, so so I, I have two things. I just want to reply for one of the comments first uh, from you. So uh, Mr Fazil, thank you for having, you know, you enjoying Brita Berkala NCPP, uh, Prof. Wan, he would be very happy to hear this because then there's this one direct, uh, there's one response. I've always said to him, why, why would you want to do it? I said, if you want to do it, then do it. He'll be very happy and he will definitely will say, ha ha, I told you so. Um, um, maybe when things are better, I would propose that we would have some talks once in a while to explain the things that happens in particle physics. It's something that I think I wanted to do even before the pandemic, but things are just not happening. I, I prefer to talk in, in real life. Okay, that's why. Secondly, um, thank you again. I will, I will deliver the message to Prof. Uh, secondly, well, Merdeka has always been a special day for me, 31st August. It's my birthday. So if uh, Dr. Farazila, anak dia, uh, nee, then 31st August, I will always have a parade for my birthday. So well, that's always a joke I do. Um, so to, to tie with, with, with the idea of independence, at least for us as, as, as an academic uh, as centers, right? Um, my, the way I see it is that um, every year we're catching up and the idea that we want to be leaders in our field, um, regardless, field, academia, whatsoever, like in, let's say I'm just going to take it for my field, uh, particle physics. So, so we always have this, not attitude, it's the feeling that we're, we're catching up. Now, what I would like, at least for particle physicists in Malaysia to do, we don't catch up anymore. We are standing shoulder to shoulder and we lead. Enough, um, you know, learning from others. We lead, them, we lead the world. That's what I, I would like to see. And I think we are seeing it slowly, but surely. Yes, I think it's time for us not to piggyback on others, but to feel that we can also lead the way. And I think that the centres today, what we've heard, uh, definitely we can see that. So, you know, thank you very much to the three of you. And before we end, I have been asked to um, to ask everyone to, I don't know, Yana, do you want everyone to turn on the camera? Tak boleh kot, just the speakers. Speakers and uh, Prof. Saiful? Prof. Saiful, Prof. Saiful. 
Can you turn on your camera, Prof. Saiful, for assessi bergambar? That's okay. the only set. All our pictures now are like this, you know, in tiles. And to the participants, thank you so much for joining us. Please don't forget to give us feedback so that we can improve. Uh, and once again, please join me, uh, if some of you might need to leave now, to please give a round of applause to our three speakers. Yay. For sharing, yeah? Thank you so much. Hi, Prof. <laughs> okay, so kita bergambar. See, we have guests from, from UKM ni, from Research Management Office UKM. So kita bergambar. All right. Uh, Yana, you want to tell us when to, to look? Yes. In? Okay. Ready? One, yep. two, three. One more. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. All right. So our album of 2020 will be full of these little tiles. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you to all the people from uh, outside of UM who have joined us. I just saw Prof uh, Abu Bakar from UKM. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. And have a good day. Save time. And happy National Day to all the Malaysians here. Bye, everyone. See you at the next session. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Assalamualaikum.